Growing chickpeas or garbanzo beans in your garden is easy. In today's episode, we show you all the steps for growing lots of chickpeas in your home garden. Here are white chickpeas, which you can easily get at your grocery store. It's sold in its dry form and the seeds are viable for a long time. These are black chickpeas or the Kabuli chickpea variety, which is also something you can get at your grocery store. The first step is to add water and soak the seeds. Chickpeas are very dry and need to be hydrated before they germinate. So add water and soak overnight or around 8 hours. And after around 8 hours of soaking, this is how they look like. The next step is germinating the seeds. We will use a Ziploc pouch and a wet paper towel to germinate our chickpeas. Remember to squeeze most of the water out of the paper towel. Here is our moist paper towel and all we do is lay our seeds out on the wet paper towel. Spread it around a bit so they are evenly spaced. And then wrap the paper towel like you see here. We will then place our paper towel in our Ziploc pouch and this can be sealed to prevent moisture from escaping and also create the humidity that these seeds need for germination. This is your mini greenhouse for germination right here. Leave this in a warm area like your kitchen countertop or your closet for around 3 days. You can keep it in a dark or lit area, it doesn't matter. Here are the white chickpeas. And I am doing this around January in Southern California as chickpeas grow best in temperatures from 70 to 80 degrees. You should do this around 6 to 8 weeks before the last frost date in your area. 3 days later, you should open up your paper towel and check if the seeds have germinated. And as we open this up, you can see that the seeds have germinated very well. Now while you can direct sow seeds, I highly recommend this method for the fastest germination. You can clearly see the roots being sent out here. This gives us a big head start in our chickpea growing journey. Our next step is to plant these chickpea seeds in small seed starting cells where they will grow for a few days. This step is needed to eliminate the seeds that do not germinate well or do not grow well and pick the strongest seedlings to transplant later. After you label your seed rows, make small holes in the soil where the seeds will go and then drop one seed in each cell with the root side facing down. Even if you don't position the seed correctly, it's okay. They will grow. And we are sowing our black chickpeas seeds here. Now moving on to the white chickpeas, we are going to do the same. Note that white chickpeas are significantly larger, seed size, plant size and the harvest size as well. However, I found that black chickpeas also grow vigorously and are equally good eaten fresh which we will get to in just a bit. Five days later, you can see that the chickpea seedlings have emerged. They are looking nice and green. They do not need any fertilizer yet as they are getting their energy from the nutrients stored in the seed itself. Seven days later, the plants have picked up even more and are now beginning to grow their second set of leaves. You can see that the black chickpeas also have a slightly better germination and growth rate which means they will be ready for transplanting in about another 7 days or so. For now, apply a mild fertilizer, use any organic fertilizer at quarter strength. A few days later, the seedlings are ready for transplanting. You can see how beautiful and healthy these leaves are. Pull out each seedling from the cell and you are now ready to transplant it in a process called as up potting. For transplanting, I use these big red cups which I get from our local Costco. You can see the drain holes in the bottom which are very important. And these big red cups are extremely good in quality and are reusable. And the best part is that they are very cheap compared to buying pots specifically for gardening purposes. We are going to fill these cups with potting mix. Use a good quality potting mix. Your plant will need nutrients at this stage to grow. We fill up about 3 fourths of the cup with the potting mix. Do not fill to the top as this will make planting difficult. You want your seedlings to be almost root bound before you up pot them. Taking a close look at our seedling, you can see how nicely the roots have grown in this seed starting mix. We place our seedling in a cup 
and then add potting mix around it to secure it in place. This is why you need to fill your cups only till they are about 3 fourth full initially. So this planting process can be done this way. Pack the soil around the plant and then do this for all your seedlings. You can see that we have also labeled our cups with the variety that we are growing. Alright, our planting is done and we are now ready for a very important step which is watering our seedlings. Don't worry if the seedlings droop a little, you can set them right as you are watering them. Give them a good soaking. And here they are, nicely hydrated and ready to grow taller. 30 days later you can begin transplanting your seedlings. We grew our chickpeas in raised containers like these. You just take out the seedling just like that and you can see all these wonderful roots that have formed on the bottom. The plant looks very healthy and it's the right time to transplant. Make sure you don't plant too deep. You want your soil to be at the same level as it was in the cup. My potting mix already has some organic fertilizer added. I will also be using some liquid organic fertilizer every 15 days. If your potting mix is reused or it's new, make sure that you add some nutrients to it while planting. And we are going to be planting the rest of the plants in raised beds. And while you can plant chickpeas very close together, they actually support each other when planted closely. I will be planting them in rows about 6 inches apart. Look at all these amazing roots. Look at how nice and fluffy the soil is. This is the soil you want when planting. I generally do not recommend digging unless you have a lot of roots remaining from the previous crop. Even then, the older roots will slowly decompose and become food for your plants. And remember to add fresh compost and worm castings on the top of your beds every few months. So we have finished planting all the plants now and they will look to droop a bit which is perfectly fine. And just as a reminder, it's now March, the best season for chickpeas to grow. Make sure you water the plants well. You must water deeply at the time of planting. And to protect the plants from winds, we are going to be staking them. This is optional, but I like doing this to keep the plants clean and looking good. I am using a bamboo stake here to secure the plants in place. And then I am using some wire ties to tie them up against the bamboo stick. And look at how nice and organized they look now. Much better with the staking. A few days later you can see that there's more growth. Now if you are growing these plants to eat the leaves, which are edible by the way, add nitrogen rich fertilizers. But to get the most amount of chickpeas, you need to make sure that you are adding a low nitrogen, high phosphorus fertilizer, which will encourage blooming and hence chickpea production. And they have started blooming as well. Very pretty pink flowers are blooming on the plant as you can see. So chickpeas are not only an edible plant, they look beautiful as well. Another 40 days later, you can see that the plants have really taken off and are loaded with fresh chickpeas as you can see. A few days later, we begin harvesting our chickpeas. Now you snip off the tops of the branches as we are doing here to harvest the chickpeas. This is the easiest way to harvest your chickpeas if you want the foliage to grow back. Look at how loaded the plants are. Now as far as insects and diseases go, aphids and worms can attack chickpeas. So if you see insect damage signs, use insecticidal soap or neem oil sprays. Since the pods are very tender and can absorb most sprays, it's better not to spray anything and just use water. Use a water hose to wash off any insects you see. And this is a very effective technique. And look at our first harvest here. These are beautiful looking chickpeas, very tender and we will begin shelling them. Now if you are planning to consume the leaves, that's fine. They have a very delicate and nice flavor. However, I mostly use the chickpeas or the garbanzo beans from this plant to eat. Let's open up one and show you. As you can see, this is how a fresh chickpea looks like and it's very hard to find fresh chickpeas at the grocery store. So grow your own. And they taste excellent raw 
or roasted. Roasted chickpeas with their pods on are so full of flavor that it's one of my favorite things to eat. And just a few days after our first harvest, our chickpea plants have now matured completely. And for this time's harvest, we will be removing the entire plants. And as we are harvesting, it's important to remember that chickpeas are grown best in the spring and fall weather. And look at all these plants we have here. We have a lot of chickpeas from the few plants that we were growing. And that's how our final harvest looks like. I hope these tips on growing chickpeas will encourage you to grow chickpeas in your garden. Please hit that like button if you enjoyed watching this video. And please subscribe to see awesome videos like these in the future. We'll see you again soon. Happy gardening!